Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about how you would apply some of those vector ideas that we talked about in lectures and how do we move things around. So I'm still using the same code as before. Uh, if you recall, this is what the program looks like. It kind of strobes through things or you can set it to individual numbers, which you won't see because it'll immediately change. Um, but let's turn this, let's turn off this strobe effect for a minute so we can kind of be off of what we saw before. Great, now we can change all that. Um, notice I was telling you how you could actually use the shader just like before, where we could actually you know, find the positions in the shader. Um, oh, whatever, right? If we can use the positions in the shader and it should work the same, uh, which is gonna be a little bit important for what we're about. To do. So say I wanted to move this uh, triangle around, right? Let's make let, let's make this kind of programmatic a little bit. Let's do uh, call it try size is going to be equal to 1.f and then we're gonna replace all of these here. So the, this is the actual vertex data that we're pushing into the shader, if you recall, right? And now, should this be the same? Great. And uh, say we want to make it smaller so we can actually move it around the screen a little bit. Um, and now that size should be just smaller, right? So if I wanted to move it to the right, by an x displacement, call it float x. Like let's, you know, x position is going to be equal to 0 0.25. And then y position, we're gonna set that to zero for now. So to apply these, all I would have to do, right, is this is going to be a vertex of x. I can just add x, the x position to all of these right and similarly i would to, i would add the y position to all of these and now my x position has it's moved to the right by 0.25 units if i want to do the same thing with y right it'll move up by 0.2 units and it's off to the side now Again, this is the vertex data. So much like we were doing in the last lecture at the end, um, changing the colors and stuff, um, it's pretty hard to do this per vertex. You don't want to do it necessarily here. So how else could we do it? Well, what if we did it on the shader, right? Last, uh, in this example, you see how you can apply something like, uh, something like a position or some kind of um, uniform. So let's uh, let's open up our shader. Let's open up the, the real one. Let's go down here, include shaders. Um, and let's pop open this one. Great. So what if we added a vector, you know, f four, um, of twenty five y here. Will that work? Well, it should. Right now, it's higher up. Even though, right, if 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 we change this to be zero, 
it'll go back to zero. Keep in mind, if you're changing the code in the different folder you want to get pulled over, make sure that you rebuild, otherwise it won't do that. So now we're back to zero. It, now, is there a way for us to do this through uh, the GPU boundary like we were doing before? What if we could create that uniform, right? Where we can do create a um, uniform, um, kind of like once, let's open up this, uh, this guy, right? And we do a uniform vector for uh, position displacement, right? And initially, we're going to initialize that to right. And now we're just going to replace this bit by that. Cool. So now, oh, right, you have to rebuild. Anyways, if we run it, it's going to be at zero. Now notice if I change this to, say, 0.25, and then I rebuild, and if I run it, it's going to be higher up. Great. So now this is working. Now, we don't really want to hit rebuild like this every single time. So what if we could do what we did here? And instead, let's read that uniform. Right? We're going to call this, um, what was it called? The position displacement uniform ID. And we're just going to copy that name. Bam. And then we're going to use this and now notice, this is a 3F because that's a vector 3. We need 4F. Yes, so the, this, there are a bunch of these functions, as I was mentioning, and they all do very similar, but you know, mostly the same thing. Um, and now instead, uh, I can put my values here. And if I run this, Again, it's up, up high. And what's really cool is like we were doing before, uh, I could do this, for example. And you'll notice it'll start to shake on me or whatever. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, so that's actually being set every single frame. So already you can see that that's quite powerful. Uh, you know, you can, you can pass it through this, this, uh, this very basic, um, thing. Now, say we had an object and we're going to get into this in, in later when we manage entities or we're going to manage, um, meshes and such. Say we wanted to give this object sort of an internal state. So let's go here and under color, we're going to add GLM vector four, or actually we're gonna use a different one. We're gonna use a mat four. Why? We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. And we're gonna call it mat four transformation. Why would we call it that? Great. Oops, we don't want a four, we want a mat four. I forget if the mat four has. I guess not. Um, anyways, cool. And over here in the app class, I want to pass that matrix into my shader. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to take and pass it the mat four F. I want to pass it like we did before.
Now, it's going to blow up at me, right? Because we can't necessarily uh, do that, right? So there is a, a macro, I believe, that GL use, uh, has developed for GLM. It's like two, it's like GLM to GLSL, like, I forgot. Um, so yeah, this is where I look things up. Here we go. I'm just looking for that one stupid line. There we go. Cool. So a couple of things here. First, I'm not passing in four uh, floats anymore. I'm actually passing in a matrix uh, four and then F. And then uh, the ID is the same. The, um, this function is a little bit different. Glue, glue is not my favorite thing, but whatever. So, not never clear to me why you need the count. Oh, I guess you don't need it with this one. No, you do. Okay, fine. We, we're passing in one matrix. Um, we're not transposing it. So we know that's true. And then the last thing we're doing is we're using this um, conversion value pointer of map transformation. So that can be rewritten though. I'm not a big fan of, of kind of obfuscating what's actually going, in, going on under the covers. So if you really wanna know how to do it without this, you would do the following. Map transformation zero, zero, which is the memory location of the first piece of data, and then you need the actual address of that. So these two things are equivalent. Um, and now if I multiply, now, now if I run this, you'll notice that there's some wackadoodle stuff that'll happen and won't let me work. It won't work. Well, I guess it does work. Cool. Um, but let's look at the code. What is it actually doing? The vertex shader we're adding this position displacement, which is it's treating this position displacement as a vector four on the shader side. So could we kind of hack it? Let's see. If I go m mat transformation zero one equals zero point one f. Let me make sure that that's working. I don't usually use the GLM. I have my own linear algebra library I wrote that I usually use. So right now you can see here the values of this are pretty much one, one, one. It's the identity matrix. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set the Y value to one, to point one. And you'll notice that now the Y value is set to point one. So these, this, this does work. However, you'll also notice that even though I've done that, our triangle has not moved. And what's going on? Well, here's the thing. We're passing a matrix into a uh, position and into a vector four, it's not gonna work. So we have to change this to a mat four. And then let's call this the um, transformation, the, the, the object transform. And we're gonna do this mat four with a one, which is gonna reproduce the same situation. However, if we rebuild and run this, we'll probably get some kind of issue, right? And that's because I didn't update the code correctly first off. So this has been changed to a plus. Okay, so let's rebuild that. And 
Let's run and see if that works. We cannot. We invalid operands 2 plus. Incapable, uh, incap incompatible options for link. Why is it invalid? Well, we're trying to add a vector 4 to a, map, a matrix. So what if we multiply it? Right, that should work. It's an identity, right? Will that work? And the answer is no. Well, first of all, we have to rebuild. Right. Well, the answer is no, or it shouldn't work. It won't do anything. Um, but it, it shouldn't work. You're multiplying a vector by this transform. Really, it should look like this. Right, and now your GL position is going to be that. Now, if we put this here, well, let's, let's run it without anything first. Let's run it. Great. So that looks right. And what you're doing here is you're taking the uh, vector position and you're multiplying it by a identity matrix. So you assume that the identity matrix times a vector, it's going to be the vector, right? I'm surprised it didn't throw an error before, but it's probably an underlying OpenGL error that wasn't being propagated. You cannot multiply a vector by a matrix, <laughs> right? The, the, the inside uh, dimensions need to match. So here it's a four by four times a four by one. So the four is in it, you'll get a four by one on the other side. Um, before we're doing a four by one times a four by four, that's incompatible. So maybe OpenGL wasn't reporting that issue to us. So what happens if we do this? Actually, let's let's not do that. Let's let's change the identity to the um, to be equal to two. One, two, two, three, three. What do you think will happen? Right. Remember that idea of the dot product of the row times the column. So what we'll see is nothing, apparently. Oh. Well, guess who has been an idiot? What else have we forgot to change? Well, this is the transform. The name of the uniform has changed. So this needs to be updated as well. So now, if we actually run this, what will happen? We get nothing. Why nothing? Let's see that our code in here is actually correct. Um, vertex shader. Yeah, that should be right. Okay. Let's see here. When in doubt, debug. Cool, 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 cool. Now our matrix should be equal to the twos that we expected. Our position displacement uniform ID is one, our solid color is zero, and we're setting it okay. Okay, that, that seemed to work. Giving it a zero seemed to work. But this isn't doing anything. Let's see if changing only one will do something. Okay, not sure why that's working now. So, all right, let's say we gave it a one, it's this size. Now, if we change it, 
say we changed it by some random amount. There's a reason why I'm only doing this to the x, y, z, and I think that's why it wasn't working before, because that final thing will apply a, almost like a scalar to them all. You'll notice that now the scaling will, it'll kind of like jiggle because we're, we're kind of displacing it by some amount randomly. Uh, in fact, if I increase that effect a little bit, you can see it, it does so even more. Um, it's pretty fun, fun stuff you can do here. So how do we convert this into, so it's already an identity. How do we um, translate it? How do we create a translation transformation? Well, if you think about each row being applied, like for example, why is it scaling it? Because the first row is one or like two, and then that's multiplied against the first row of the um, first row of the um, the first column, I'm sorry, of the vector, which is just the x component. So that first row is going to transform that 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 um, first thing. And so if you think about it, uh, we don't want to have, uh, what we want to have is a way to add a value to the x position in a way that does not affect the y position. And I won't go into too much depth because we'll talk about this at a later time. But if you think about the last row of the um, of our translation um, transformation matrix, if we set that to the value that we want to transform, that's actually going to translate our x value. So notice now it's over here. Uh, similarly, if we think about the second column of the last row, we can do the same for the y value. And the reason for that is if you do the math on this, if you think about the last row being multiplied by the um, by the x by by that the the column, right? Row, column, row, column, row, column, row, column. You are effectively um, going to get that. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I, this is where I always get confused on this myself. OpenGL is a column row forward thing. So you actually are taking the column and multiplying it by the row. And in that case, you can think the first column, uh, you were applying that the first X is, that's how you're manipulating the X and so on and so forth, the other columns. And so that final column entry in the final row simply gets added on to the vector. Um, those are very good. This is actually one of those things I do recommend. Um, Wikipedia does a very good uh, explanation here where you can see that basically when you do the numbers, you effectively get this, uh, this multiplication and what you get is the position times the x. But notice that here it's the um, it's in, in the final uh, column versus the final row. And again, that's why I was mentioning the there is a difference. Like some, uh, I think DirectX does it this way, whereas OpenGL does it the column way, where it's like a column times a, a, a row versus a row times a column. So you know, in, uh, it's something that to, you, you really do need to kind of remember that you have rows, like you basically columns of rows versus rows of columns. Uh, you're gonna probably flip it upside down like I do that all the time, so don't worry about it if you don't quite understand it, uh, the difference between the two, but you, you it, will, it will be fine. So you can kind of um, really mess around with this stuff here and like we were doing before. just give it a little bit of a wiggle. 
Cool. Um, and now that's being done through a translation matrix. Uh, there are other matrices, uh, such as, like, there are other transformations. Obviously, you know about scale. We kind of played with that already. Scale is super easy uh, in that you're just sort of applying your, the identity, that diagonal, you're making it bigger or smaller, and all of the values will, will retain that. Um, and also trans, uh, rotation, rotation is a lot more uh, involved. So now, hopefully you've seen by manipulation, very simple manipulations, we're able to move this geometry around the screen. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward how to do. So cool. Now I'm going to be next going into some of the other examples, uh, like the translation, uh, as well as um, getting into a bit of uh, how to build a mesh uh, class.